Today we're going to be working on a continuous loop or cocoon wrap, which in my experience is the only improvised evacuation system that can be used with a patient with a potential spine injury. I wouldn't use any improvised system over a commercial or professional rescue, but there are times where you may need to move a patient a relatively short distance. You have a bad accident on a river, you need to move the patient to your base camp, or maybe the helicopter's a day or two away. You want to be able to take care of your patient where you can keep them out of the weather. You may need to be able to move them a few hundred meters to safety. So this is a system that will allow you to do that. A few things you'll need for this. One is some kind of rope. This is a river rescue rope. If you're a climber, you'll have a climbing rope. If you're a backpacker, you'll have utility cord, maybe for hanging your food, whatever. If you've only got 30 feet, you probably need more than that. You've got friends, you can put a few together. You'll usually have something that you can use for rope. Today we have paddles because we're on a river trip. However, you could use skis, I've done that many times, ski poles, just poles from the forest, tent poles. You can usually find something for that. And then uh, a tarp. Today we have a big old polyethylene blue tarp, but you say you don't have one of these. A tent fly could work, a big poncho, a couple ponchos doubled up. You need something tarp-like. Even a garbage bag opened up could work in a pinch. In this MedWild, we're going to show you how to actually make this system. We're not going to talk about the specific patient care associated with getting a patient into the system, but we'll do that in a future MedWild. That will be an entire segment on moving patients with potential spine injuries. Today, we're just going to concentrate on the actual construction of the system. Started just by tying a knot into the end of the rope. Any old knot will do. This is a bowline. Kevin's going to help me just make a series of V's. And no matter what you do, these V's will be the wrong size. They'll either be too long or too short, but if you're going to err, I think it's better to err towards making them a little bit too long. Pull that out to the same width as the other. There we go. And let's make these a little tighter. Let's bring those good. That's good. Now our victim today is going to be Ari. And uh, my arm span is my height, so that's about six feet. I know Ari is shorter than six feet, so all we really need is about my arm span, and we've already got that. Today we have a pretty big tarp. It's not uncommon to end up with a smaller tarp or a tent fly or a poncho. Just remember that there's no rule that says you have to put it down nice and neat like this. If you've got a small tarp, you can actually use the hypotenuse and turn it diagonally like this. And even if this was a tiny little tarp, you can see I can get a lot more length out of it. The other thing is, if you can put this back, in bad weather, people always want to center the tarp just like this. And then they bring the top of the tarp over the patient. But imagine that today it's raining or snowing. You can see where all the precipitation is going to go. So I, if, if there's any chance of weather, I always just offset the tarp like this. Patient goes in like this. You can actually even fold this up on the patient's foot, so-called burrito wrap style or hypothermia wrap style. Then when you bring the top over the patient, you can see that all of the precipitation rolls off the system rather than getting caught on the seam in the middle. So now we need to take whatever we have that we're going to use as our splints or rigid items and put them down. So if you're watching this, don't assume that this pattern is how you're supposed to do it. Sometimes I do this with skis, sometimes I do it with poles, I've done it with snowboards. Um, today I've got paddles, sometimes it's kayak paddles. So there's really no method. And if you're watching this and you can come up with a better method, that's fine because I'm making this one up as I go along. So we'll just lay down our paddles. I want to make sure that our victim doesn't bend too much at the waist, so I'll probably stagger it like this. And uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Maybe something like this. And that seems to be about our victim's 
height, so I'm pretty good with that. Now it's time to pad these. Obviously, we're going to have a patient on top of the system, so you really need a lot of padding. People usually remember to put lots of padding on top of whatever these splints are. And you need lots of thermorests or lots of insulite pads, lots of whatever you have. But what sometimes people forget when they build these systems is that ultimately, no matter how much we pad the bottom, when we wrap the patient up in this, these cords are going to be potentially cutting into the patient. So it's really important to make sure you have some padding that extends out to the side. So when we wrap the patient up, the padding is protecting the patient as well. An additional resource is a backpack. And again, this has been one of our themes, always take the victims, because you don't want to wreck yours, but a good backpack like this can serve as a great immobilization device. Most modern backpacks have aluminum or carbon fiber stays in them. And uh, we can actually use these almost like a Kendrick extrication device and actually package the patient in an inverted pack in this case. In a future episode, we'll talk a lot more about patient packaging and how you can use your own equipment to begin the immobilization process prior to moving the patient. But just imagine something like this used to properly immobilize Ari prior to putting her into this system. Additionally, I would have a, at least a SAM splint cervical collar on Ari, and I'd probably form some kind of headbed or put some kind of towel rolls, insulite, something in to take up the space next to her head and duct tape the whole thing in so that she is an integral package prior to moving her into the system. But as I stated for today, we're just going to show you how to make the mummy wrap. Obviously, a backpack like this provides additional support and protection from your skis, ski poles, kayak paddles, whatever you have underneath. So we'll just set this here today. We're going to have Ari walk onto the system in a later episode of MedWild. We'll be talking specifically about how to manage spine injured patients. But for this module today, we just don't have time. So our spine injured patient is magically going to walk into the system. First of all, I'd like to get Cheryl over here. It's always really important to get somebody at the patient's head if you have the personnel. Our patient could easily overheat, somebody could kick gravel in her eye, she could be claustrophobic, so it's great to have somebody in direct communication with the patient at all times. And Cheryl is the perfect person to do that and we'll be talking to Cheryl in later episodes about some specific aspects of patient management. Kevin and I are going to start to tie the system together but we're going to ask some smushers to come in to help mold the system around the patient so Kevin and I can really concentrate on tying these knots. Can you get that in there? I'm gonna pull that loop a little bit. You can let go. So this is easy to get confused with and something I do sometimes when I'm tying one of these systems because there's so many ropes and it can get confusing is every time I tie one of these I just say which side of the patient did it come from. So this is a loop coming off of Ari's right side. So next it's going to be a loop coming off of her left side. You see there's a bunch of slack here because there's no way you can anticipate exactly how much rope you're going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and snug that up from this side. and then thread it through. And you just let that loop get a little smaller when I pull on it. Okay, and the smushers could move upstream. For the last part of this, I'm going to use a carabiner. You don't have to have a carabiner. It just makes it a little bit easier. And uh, 
is Ari ready to go, Cheryl? Ari's told me she's a little warm, so I'm going to go ahead and take off her hat so she can have some cooling from her head and I'll protect uh, the sun from her face. Sounds good to me. At this point, I'm just going to put the carabiner through this last loop. And this time I'm going to actually take this loop and put it over her shoulder. And Michelle, if you could just help me smush. Kevin's going to tighten that up and bring the carabiner down a little bit. That's good. And then this one over her shoulder as well. Then I'm just going to secure this with a half hitch, which is probably the most underutilized knot in the world of knots. It's a very secure knot, simple to tie, simple to untie, and I'll probably just put a loose double half hitch in like this that a rescuer could untie pretty easily if they needed to. Now what we'll do is we'll tidy up the rest of the rope. Kevin, if you could do that. And meanwhile, I'm going to get ready to deal with Ari's head. The last part of this usually involves some duct tape if you have it. I have tried putting many different kinds of straps and everything else you can imagine on the end of this. And because the system is sort of conical, any kind of strap or rope that you tie around the end just comes off. So I've decided the only thing that really works is good old fashioned duct tape. I'm gonna go ahead and protect Ari's hair because I'm not worried about her C-spine immobilization in this episode of Medwild. I am worried about protecting her hair as Howard does his magic with the duct tape. When I say duct tape, I don't mean a little piece of duct tape. The only way this really works is circumferential duct tape. So that's what we're going to do. So Cheryl is going to organize a little lift. I would like to have two lifters assist me on both sides, one directly to my left, one directly to my right, and then shoulder to shoulder. So if you can come up just a little bit further. This is not going to be a full lift. This is going to be simply a tilt. I will organize it, I will call it. And so I need one person right here. All right, and remember to protect your backs as we lift. Hips down, and on the count of three, I'll call it gentle, slow, even. One, two, three, a tilt. There are demerit points for duct taping yourself into the victim. And let's try and keep her even and flat. Her right side is tilted. Down when you're ready. All right. One, two, three.